Hello. 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 Hey. Hi, everybody. Right. Hello and welcome to the London's Calling Dream. Oh, no, it's a dream force there. Whoops, that's wrong. Uh, Demo Jam. <laughs> Can't see where I copied this from. <laughs> Featuring 12 amazing apps. Uh, my name is Francis Pinder, and this is, if it's on, is it on? Say my name. Oh, really? Jody okay. Wagner. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> you can follow us along on Twitter. Hope everybody is tweeting. All good, yeah? LDN S call 18. As well as also hash app demo jam. Uh, and today's winner, I don't know where it is, but there's a trophy. <laughs> Todd does, it's fine. Um, a trophy, uh, and the winner, you're going to vote for the winner of the Demo Jam at the end. So keep an eye out on which your favorite app is. You can vote for it, and then the winner will go home with the amazing Demo Jam prize. Trophy, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> so today's participants are NC Squared, New Voice Media, Elements Cloud, Aircool, Squid, Map Anything, Conga, or two apps, Jitterbits, Sharing Picks, Invisible I.O., and Ebsta. So for the rules, all demos are live, no slides. You guys got that? No slides. You have three minutes. We will give you a warning at 30 seconds, and then we will just yank you off stage. Don't fall off the stage. <laughs> There'll be one winner chosen by you guys, our audience, and you guys at home that are live streaming us. There will be a special poll link at the end for you guys to vote. You cannot vote for yourselves. We're watching you. <laughs> we will give it three minutes for you guys to vote, and then we will show you who the winner of the coveted Demo Jam trophy is. OK. When we find it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Todd can hear me saying, where is it? I'm sure he's fine. Um, <laughs> OK, so first up. Neil, are you ready? Start getting set up. Um, so Neil Crawford is co-founder of NC Squared. Uh, NC Squared authors a distribution engine for Salesforce, making lead assignment easy. Distribution engine is a native Salesforce app to distribute uh, leads, opportunities, cases, based on fairness, availability, territory, and more. Follow up times and automatically reassign to ensure they're all followed up, hopefully. Yeah. Are you ready? Almost? No pressure. No pressure. Have we got the timer ready? Timer ready? I'm going to let you do the time. OK, I'm doing the timer. Do you have Are you going to do the countdown? Do you have a fun sound for the 30 seconds? No. <laughs> <laughs> I could make one. Maybe not. OK. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, I've got it. OK. I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly ready. <laughs> hey. OK, you ready? So three, two, one, go. Hello. So uh, distribution engine, as uh, Francis said, makes lead assignment easy. So quick show of hands if you've used the Salesforce lead assignment rules. OK, quick show of hands if you've used Omnichannel. OK, quick show of hands if you want me to stop doing shows of hands, because I've only got three minutes and I'll probably <laughs> get on with it. OK, so distribution engine goes beyond what Salesforce can do natively to handle some of the complexities that sales and service managers often have when they're trying to manage teams of people and assigning work to those teams. So into my team, I've got uh, my first team here. It's called the uh, Super Sales Team, and I've got a number of uh, reps in my team. I've got the leads that I'm distributing to them. So this one happens to be a lead team, but we can distribute other objects as well. Top right, we've got the working hours of this team. And then down at the bottom right, we've got what we call distributors, which are the ways in which we've chosen to assign these leads. So these are in order, and we can drag them around. But at the top, we're checking whether this is a, a target account, and if so, give it to whoever owned that. And then we're assigning the hot leads by, the regi by region, and then warm leads, and then we're doing a load balancing at the bottom to top people up with, with trade show leads. Now, it's come to my attention that all, not all my reps are uh, performing equally, so I'm going to even things out for them a little bit. Uh, 
I've heard that some people are just sat on a Hawaiian island not doing much, so I'm going <laughs> to dial them down a bit. And it turns out that Appy's doing all the work, so I'm going to bump up Appy's workload because she's totally nailing it. Okay, so that's that done. And then I am uh, going to assign some more specific things to these teams, these team members. Maybe they're not all equal. So this guy apparently can speak Hawaiian. <laughs> uh, this guy maybe can speak Spanish, who knows. And uh, this person here is really good at selfies and dancing. So we can assign specialist skills to this team, and then we can link those to attributes on the things that we're trying to assign to give us some specialist kind of assignments. And then we can also manage the availability of the team. So we can say who's in the office this week, plan ahead. They can toggle themselves on and offline. Or we can say, I know they're going to be out. And then we can prevent distribution over those time periods so that we don't have to remember to turn people on and off. Um, and then we can track. So once this thing's running, it's an automated system. It's going to be dishing the work out, tracking what's happening. And then we can monitor the team and see how this has been going, the lead volumes, how quickly people have been following up. We can automatically reassign if things haven't been followed up and give them to other team members. So managers can get on with other things and just let the kind of workload management take care of itself. That's it. Come see us downstairs or have a look on the App Exchange. Thank you. Time's up. Great job. Thanks, Neil. Yeah. So next up, we have New Voice Media. I feel like I started my demo jam career with New Voice Media. <laughs> um, they are a cloud contact center and inside sales platform that delivers more successful conversations. They, their award-winning customer contact platform helps organizations worldwide build a more personal relationship with every customer and prospect. It joins up communication channels without expensive or disruptive hardware changes and plugs straight into your CRM for hard-won data access. With a true cloud environment and proven 99.999% .999 platform availability, it ensures complete flexibility, scalability, and reliability. So Richard, are you ready? Um, two seconds, let the oh. TV screen appear, there we go. Okay, three, two, one, go! Perfect, so hi everyone, um, New Voice Media, like we said, is a cloud-based contact center and inside sales platform. And we help you get closer to your customers by knowing everything you know about your customers and relating it to every conversation you're having. So just before I get into it, did you know, on average, um, businesses review only 3% of their calls? Which means there's 97% of calls that we have no idea what their customers are saying about their business or to the business. So introducing the New Voice Media Conversation Analyzer. So New Voice Media, with every inbound or outbound call, we generate a task that sits inside of Salesforce. And within that task, we have what we call Conversation Analyzer. So within Conversation Analyzer, I get a call time breakdown, so I can see how much percentage of the time the agent is speaking on the phone, how much time the customer is speaking. I can also see, also see how much silence is on the phone. And if I need to, I can see how much talk over time between the agent and the customer there is. But where Conversation Analyzer really gets powerful is that we're transcribing every single word that's happening on the call. So I can see sort of every keyword, and where we're highlighting different phrases or words is where we're putting them into different categories or buckets. So if I scroll to the top, I can see straight away we've said, hi, welcome to customer services, can I have your full name please? And where it highlights your full name please, you can see it's highlighted in purple. And if I scroll up, I can see that purple is actually our compliance category. So as part of the IDMV process on this call, we've told them, um, we've asked for their full name, but we can also build other categories and other subcategories. So if I go into subcategories, we can see that we've verified the call, which is great, but you can see recording is actually grayed out. So we haven't actually told this customer that we're recording the conversation. So as a business, we could actually be at risk. But we can actually sort of pull out key categories and phrases, and it's customizable for every business and I also get a key timeline of the different phrases. So I can see the call, and I can see straight away we've asked them, can we put you on hold? And straight away, I can see that they have. So without even listen to, listening to this call, I get a good understanding and a good idea of what's happened. But this is only one conversation. What happens if we take every single conversation we are having with our customers and surface that within Einstein Analytics? So you can see this dashboard is quite crazy. 
Um, and that's because it's a lot of data. It's actually 28,000 conversations. So how do I make this relevant to me? So if I take myself as a service manager, I might actually want to look at only calls where we've had complaints. 30 seconds. So I just click on complaints, and straight away I can say there's 28,000 conversations, I've gone to 100, but I might want to look at complaints where we're not compliant. So again, taking those 28,000 conversations down to 98, which is a much more manageable for me to be able to go in and review. And I can also see sort of which of our agents are the culprits of complaints. So I can see Scott, he's only had 64, but by using the conversation analyzer, I can train him and improve his techniques on calls in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have Elements Cloud. We have, um, Elements Cloud is a freemium agile business analysis and GDPR application. You can capture business requirements and, and user stories, document processes, and embed diagrams in objects. Sync your Salesforce config data to the Elements dot cloud reference model where you can see a full picture of your org and for every field listed in the reference model you can categorize where personal data is held and add supporting information to help comply with GDPR. So Richard Parker, co-founder of Elements Cloud, are you ready? I am. Okay, three, two, one, go. Well thank you Francis, did a fantastic job of summarizing it all. Um, looking at documenting your org, who here has got a really well documented org? Come on, there must be one. <laughs> Okay, so it is a problem. Why is it a problem? When Salesforce started, everything very simple, not a problem. Fantastic applications like you've just seen up here. Things get more and more complex over time, becomes a problem. Can you really start to even understand what's happening in your org? This is a very basic one. The answer is no. So can I go to Object Manager? Can I attach documentation here? The answer is still no. So one thing that we do in Elements, we do a lot of things around process, supporting you on the whole agile development life cycle that we talked about, business analysis and so on. But a big part of that is actually this bit here that says reference models. What is that? Uh, excuse me, and that should be a tab. Right. So, Salesforce config, what we're doing is actually syncing all the information from your Salesforce setup. Uh, and you can see here, it's all running inside Lightning. It's a managed application. And what I get is basically an understanding of everything synced into elements so that you can start to document it. So if I take a standard object like opportunity, over here I can attach notes, I can attach um, any third-party documentation URLs, I can even link to the underlying process information that you can capture in the freemium app that is elements sitting underneath there. Uh, I can basically have, so this is opportunity, everywhere across the operation where the opportunity object is used. Uh, I can even link this down to and build data models uh, inside Elements. So we were doing this with, with customers uh, middle of last year. They were getting great stuff here, and they're saying, this is nuts, guys. You've got all this fantastic information out, and we're having to take all that information out into spreadsheets to get ready for GDPR, to do data inventories. We're already using Elements to do the privacy by design bit. We're redesigning our operational processes to sort out what we've got to do, but can you not help us around that? So if you actually um, go in here and go to a simple object like contact, uh, and we go down here, click on contact, um, down here in contact, obviously if I get into fields, I can now start to do some different stuff here because when I'm looking at fields like account ID um, and I look at GDPR, suddenly I can start to classify personal data. 30 seconds. And I can see start to look at how many years, retention periods, legal basis for assessment, all the information people are capturing in spreadsheets. The difference here is it's synchronized on a nightly basis, and not only are we doing the data side, but we're actually uh, pulling in and giving you free maps to understand how you need to drive GDPR, the things you need to change. So come down, have a look at us downstairs, and we can take you around the rest of the life cycle that we support. Thank you very much. Time's up. Well Okay, that was some pretty cool stuff. So next up, we have Andre and Anthony from Aircall. If you don't know, it's another call center software. I always get the call centers. 
Uh, it empowers sales and support teams to better communicate with customers. Connecting uh, AirCall to Salesforce takes minutes and it integrates phone calls with your existing workflows to get all your call center features that the t your team needs. Use the data held in Salesforce to bring context and interactions to improve customer experience. And if you're on the go with AirCall, you can make and receive calls on your mobile app and have every interaction logged in Salesforce. No hidden cost fees or hardware needed. You guys ready? Mike, thank you so much. Okay, you guys ready? Okay, three, two, one, go. Hi, welcome everyone. So today I'm going to show you how with AirCall, you can set up your phone system fully integrated with Salesforce in less than three minutes. So let's start from the Salesforce App Exchange, where we'll install the AirCall package and we'll be redirected to the AirCall dashboard. There we're going to create a new number for our UK sales team. It's a, it's a new team that we're just opening and we're selecting a UK number. This could be for your support use case, operational use case also, and we could also just as well open a number in Brazil if this is your new office you're thinking to open. Here, we're selecting a UK number. Now we're going to have the choice to create a London number. Why not? After all, it will be the, kind, the city in which our UK office team will be based. So we'll select a London number, and then we'll select a few teammates based on skills who will be answering the calls to this number. Here we're connecting the number to Salesforce. Again, we're all live, the number is created and can be used instantly to start receiving calls. Now let's fine tune our Salesforce integration. Here we'll go in this AirCall dashboard where we'll be able to select what kind of calls you want to log for, your outgoing calls, your incoming calls, your missed calls, but also if you have a contact page that matches with the, con with the contact calling, do you want this contact page to pop up when you receive the incoming call? If there's an opportunity attached to this contact, should we log the call against this opportunity? For the support use case, it will work just as well with the case. Now let's go to Salesforce and see how Anthony here, a UK sales agent, will handle the calls with the AirCall phone embedded inside Salesforce. Here, we're going to receive now an incoming call on our new UK office line that we've just created one minute ago. As you can see, John Doe is just calling, now we've got the whole page opening here, all the information accessible, the size of the deal, the size of the next step schedule with John Doe, and we'll be able to take a few notes on this call maybe. Oh, this is live, taking a leaving a tag. The idea is to add as much information as you can on your calls. Actually, John Doe wants to speak to me. So Anthony, very simply, will transfer the call to me. Me, I'm, I'm here with you today at London Calling, but I still have my mobile app on my mobile phone. So I'll now be receiving the call on my mobile app. Again, this is all live, and I'll be answering John Doe and letting him know that I'll be actually calling back later. <laughs> <laughs> we now have everything which is logged. Every information is logged into separate fields. So here, the link of the call recording will be displayed here. The waiting time, the call duration, the comment left by my sales rep here, Anthony. Every information is logged into separate fields, which are then can be used into reports as we actually push all those reports 30 seconds. to you. Here, you want to know what are the top 10 customers with who you spend the most time on the phone. This will be just as easy. We've got all the info, we'll, all the info into separate fields. We'll push this info. When's the best time to call for your sales reps? We'll push this info. So here's what we've done in simply three minutes. Imagine what we could do in half a day. Thank you very much. Cool. Wow. Well, next up we have Squid. Squid was founded in 2013 on the simple belief that enterprise software should stop forcing people to behave like machines. Instead, apps should behave more like humans who use them so everyone can thrive in the digital world. With Squid's simple to use but incredibly robust cloud front end design and deploy platform, anyone can connect to disparate data sources, assemble highly complex made to order applications and instantly make changes all without writing code. More than 5 million users across 35 countries use Squid to engage with each other, with data, and with new customers in meaningful ways. John, are you ready? I'm ready. Do I have to say any more, though? <laughs> <laughs> you have th right, three, two, one, go. Great. Squid is a managed Salesforce application that sits on top of your Salesforce data, whether that be custom or standard data and any enterprise data that you have within your, your enterprise. It allows you to make highly tailored, customized UIs and user experiences, whether that's for internal teams on top of your sales cloud, your service cloud, or marketing cloud, or for external use with partners and customers through communities. 
So let's, um, let's look in. So nothing is prescriptive. This is the squid interface, which allows you to build pages or applications. And as you can see, we can get into Salesforce data, but I could easily connect into SAP, Google, or, or, or SharePoint, or any other data. And then declaratively drag and drop components to make up my application and link them to the data sources, whether they're Salesforce data or, for example, HANA SAP data here. And this application here actually produces this page output on top of my Salesforce org. Now, it works equally well in Classic as it does with Lightning. Here I'm taking over the Lightning page in total, but it could be co-working with standard Lightning components. This is a, an application that allows me to see all of my uh, customers, and I can got charts, and I can drill in, and I can easily see that I've got an overdue opportunity which is in the past. So not only is it uh, visualizations, but I can interact with the data, and I can move this to, for example, Q2. I know that's going to close there. Save it, and you'll see that the charts behind now will update real time because we're interacting with the real data. Um, it also allows me to do things like this app. I can go and look at customers and get a 360 degree view of my customers here, so I can look at analytics, I can look at SAP sales orders. I look at my opportunities and interact with the data. Not only can I see my customers in this application, but I could go in and see what my activities are. And to show you here, I can then maybe want to send a quote. But rather than use a CPQ application, I've built a tailored application here again. Nothing's prescriptive. This is an application that I want, I've built for my user. So I've got to add a name for this organization before I can step on to the next stage. With, with put a process in place here to guide the user through this CPQ application. But if I want to add 100, 100 of these up, uh, laptops, you can see now we're declaratively updating the data and putting the quote in. I could then move along and update my, my order, you know, put some discounts on it, and then create from that data a tailored document to either email out or send out. These are just two examples of what you can build with no code on top of your Salesforce data. Thank you. With Squid. Thank you so much, John. We always love seeing Squid in action. Next up, we have Adam from Map Anything. Map Anything, if you haven't heard of them, which I'm sure everyone has makes geo-productivity software for companies that use Salesforce to empower field sales, field service, fleet, and marketing teams with location-based insights. Unlike geo-analytics, which simply uses mapping to inform decisions, Map Anything transforms analytics into real-time actionable intelligence for the mobile workforce. Leveraging data combined with live IoT and vehicle insights, they streamline critical business processes to improve productivity and efficiency for a higher ROI. So the big question, Adam, are you ready? You ready? Here we go. All right, yep. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so Map Anything helps answer five very critical questions for businesses. So things like how many people do I need? Where should I place them? Um, as a rep, what's the best way to manage my day? You know, what are my people actually doing, and what have we learned to improve on going forward? And I'm actually going to show you within Map Anything a number of these different cases and what we can do to help address those questions. So, for example, you know, you talk about the traveling sales rep problem. So, I'm a rep. I want to understand my accounts. I want them color code based on the rating and use that based on, you know, I have specific visits in Milton Keynes. I want to know who else is nearby so I can make the most of my trip out there for the day. So for example, I can come in here. I can not only pull open my Salesforce calendar, but then I can go and say, OK, well, I certainly have uh, some on-site meetings. What can I also do? I could then go and grab a couple of these and then drop them into a calendar. So for example, I could go add these to my schedule. Map Anything will go, in fact, take into account the scheduled meetings, and then also go and then give me the best way to go about seeing these. So this is actually a very complex day. What it will then do is that I can then take this and then go and save it to a specific day and then pull it up on my mobile phone. So for example, let's just say I save this. It's actually gone into my Salesforce calendar. I can pop into my mobile device. It will tell me where I am. 
I can go and pop open my schedule. I can very easily see that, hey, this is what I had scheduled for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and generate that. I can then go and execute upon what I planned on in the field. So this is, these are my points. I have my specific uh, point number one. I can then go get directions, log my activities in there, and then continue on to point number two. What's particularly helpful is if I needed to say, hey, maybe my schedule canceled on me while I was on the train there or while I was driving. We can then go in and actually overlay additional information on the map to there. Um, just some other aspects that you can see. So from like a managerial perspective, hey, I want to understand where it is the area that I'm covering. Maybe I want to visualize my territory boundaries, understand what's actually happening in the specific area. What is it that my people are doing? And then click into this and get some additional understanding as to what's happening at the territory level. So what is the value of each specific area? 30 seconds. And what can we do to improve on that? And the last part I'd like to cover quickly is basically mapping things IoT platform, which is the ability to then go in and visualize IoT information, so telematics, vehicle information, directly natively within Salesforce, which then goes and interacts with the Salesforce data, which you can go and turn into dashboards and reports. So things like health and safety, mileage, all of those aspects are easily available and accessible right in Salesforce. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Right on time. Okay, so next we have Conga. So Conga is the go-to application provider for Salesforce users looking to accelerate business processes. With one of the most popular apps on the Salesforce App Exchange, eight years running, Conga automates data, document data generation, contracts, and reporting for over 550,000 users in 45 uh, 45 countries across many different industries. So, Richard, are you ready? Uh, give me just a couple of okay. On the we should be How many people use Conga? There you go, okay. You ready? Uh, I'm waiting for it to get on the screen, but it just a be. second. No. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, cool. Right, are you ready? Three. So, no, three, no. two, one, go. Brilliant. So, Conga does a whole suite of things, but most famously, we're known for the document generation. We've been on the App Exchange for about 11 years now with the third ever app there. What a lot of people don't know is that we do a huge amount more than that. So, we do things like data management, contract management, and as of Tuesday, we launched our brand new e-signature tool. So what I want to show you today is I actually want to show you the contract management and the e-signature side of it. So within Salesforce, our applications can actually manage the entire contract lifecycle management process. From seeing where all of your contracts are, from managing the clauses in them, and what's going on with them where they are. If I click into one of these contracts, what we can see is we can see exactly what's going on. So on the right-hand side, we can see the contract activity. We track everything, so whether the email has been sent out, whether it's been replied to, whether a new version of the file has been negotiated and uploaded, and it means that you don't have to forget things, you don't have to forget to upload things, the whole process is automated. So we're negotiating this contract, we've sent it out to our party, we've had the back forth, back forth legal process, but what we can do within Salesforce is we can actually work with this contract. So we can view the red lines we can see all of the clauses which have changed, and we can see what's been going on with this document as and when it's been negotiated. What I think is the most powerful feature is, is what we call TrueUp. What TrueUp does is it doesn't just compare and redline the documents, it actually scans these documents for the data which is in it. So here we can see all of the Salesforce fields, the account ID, the billing city, and we can also see all the clauses which have changed. So really the key point here is that there's no gap between the data in your contracts and the data in Salesforce, which is your one system of truth. If I go ahead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to update this data. We can see the document value is net 45, but the Salesforce value is net 30. There's a difference here. And we're going to choose to accept that because it's been negotiated. That's what's been accepted. But also the clauses. We need to track what's changing in the clauses in our documents. 
Again, we can choose to accept them because this is what's been negotiated, this is what's been changed. So the last part of the process, and what we're really doing here is we're trying to manage the whole end-to-end -end process from the data, from the documents, from the contract negotiation, is to actually get this contract signed. 30 seconds. So what we have here is we have our e-signature tool. We can simply click on this button, send Conga sign contract. Our third party is gonna receive the email, and what they can do is they can begin signing. So here's our own electronic signature tool, purpose-built for Salesforce. We're going to review this document, we're gonna get it signed, and the MSA is now complete. Time's up. Thank you, Richard, that was great. So next up, we have Leon from OR2. This is gonna be a little bit of an interactive to demo, so we have a, a request for you guys. But before I do that, or two specializes in inbound email automation and automated assignment. Email to anything enables automatic creation in Salesforce objects from inbound emails. E2A gives you email to lead or standard or custom object capability. And they're also going to use QAssign, which uses sophisticated assignment rules to automatically distribute leads, cases, or other Salesforce tickets to your best available rep or agent matching those tickets to a number of different criteria. E2A and QAssign work seamlessly together and can help you implement a powerful end-to-end -end ticketing system for your department of choice. So now Leon's request is he wants to demonstrate email to anything. Okay, great. So our helper here, James, James thank you. Um, he wants you guys to send an email to demojam at or2apps.com. That's the one. That. And tell him which is your favorite, pizza, beer, or cake. You do only need one word. And we're going to see what Leon is going to do with this information. Are you ready? Okay. Three, okay. two, one, go. I'm going to tell you about email to anything, uh, E2A for short. Um, we're hopefully going to see soon some leads start to appear. They're appearing there already from emails you're sending in. Um, we'll come back to this in a minute. First of all, going to show you a, another lead which has been generated by email to anything, just as an example lead. Here you can see where all the emails um, come, get stored. So the email that generated this lead is here, and then subsequent email trail all shows up. Here, uh, you can um, reply from here or create a new email. So if you reply so straight right from in Salesforce, you can uh, send your email or you can reply from Outlook, Gmail or anywhere else and it's all gonna get uh, tracked here in your, uh, right again to your lead or any other object uh, that, that you want. So, um, Email to anything, we're looking at leads here, but it works with any object, including uh, so email to opportunity, uh, email to contact, or custom objects. Uh, so just gonna show you a slightly different um, use case here, which is, this is a lead again. I'm just looking at a list of leads. You can see there's just one, but uh, we're gonna look at taking in a structured email or, well, taking in the data from a structured email. With email to anything, you can extract any data from an email and uh, put that into your lead or any record you're creating. So here we're gonna extract all of this information I've put in yellow for you to see. I'm gonna press send now. Hopefully that's gonna appear in a minute. Um, if I press refresh here, refresh, and uh, there it comes. Uh, go into that lead and you can see all that data from the email is all showing here, um, including address and so on. Uh, let's just have a quick flip back to see how we're doing. Well, we've got a lot coming in there. Beer's really popular. <laughs> um, so let's just look at one more thing here, which is, uh, this is a custom object called request which is, this is an example of creating an end-to-end -end ticketing system using email to anything. 30 seconds. Um, 
And you can see all your emails uh, here being tracked uh, again. Let's go back to here. So all of these leads here have, have been created from emails you're sending in. Uh, you can see it's identified your product from, uh, for, from the email. And it's, uh, it's sent an automated reply back. And if you reply to that reply, you can see some of you have with how many uh, you want to order. It's, it's then updated that lead with a quantity and changed the status here to qualified. And uh, our other app called QSign has, has also assigned Time out. Time up. Cool, good job. Right, so next up we have Jitterbit. So Don Dominic Dunkley, pre-sales engineer for Amir, is going to be doing this demo jam. And Jitterbit is an API transformation company that accelerates innovation by combining the power of APIs and integration. The Jitterbit unified API integration platform enables companies to rapidly connect SaaS, on-premise and cloud applications and instantly infuse intelligence into any business processes. By integrating Salesforce with your SaaS, cloud and on-premise systems intelligently, Jitterbit helps businesses make faster, more effective decisions. Best of all, there is a team of industry experts working with you closely to accelerate your digital transformation initiatives. So, Dominic, are you ready? Not quite. Oh, right. Da, da, da. Yes, you ready? Can you see my screen? Yes. I can. Three, two, Brilliant. one, go. Hello, everyone. Dom here, sales engineer for Jitterbit. Um, just to expand on the sort of thing that we do for people, we're all about integration and API transformation. So consuming APIs, but also publishing APIs. Um, in the case of uh, Salesforce, we are actually the strategic integration partner for Salesforce, and many of our customers use uh, Salesforce as one of the endpoints. But the other endpoints could be wide and various. They could be massive enterprise applications like SAP and the like, or they could be much smaller, sort of customized bespoke applications, even down to the level of Excel uh, type of integrations. Uh, we cater for all of those endpoints and enable you to very rapidly build integrations to handle all of those, uh, uh, all of those requirements. So what I'm gonna show you here today is uh, based around case management within, uh, uh, within Salesforce. Just to illustrate how we can very quickly integrate things like emails, Slack notification channels, uh, text messaging, and uh, artificial intelligence. You know, whatever systems you like, you can build them and integrate them with, uh, with Jitterbit. So what I'm gonna do here is create a new case inside uh, uh, Salesforce, obviously. And you'll instantly notice I've immediately got a notification up here from Slack. That's because I've got um, uh, an integration that sits behind the scenes here. When I create a new case in Salesforce, I'm actually sending a notification to certain people in a Slack channel so they can come along and have a look at their Slack and investigate that case and perhaps promote or demote the importance of that based on their supervisory powers. So in this case, we've got um, a medium priority one here, but I'm gonna promote this by clicking the approve button uh, saying this is actually a high priority. So in the background, we've got another Jitterbit integration there that's triggered from Slack that is effectively going to update my case inside Salesforce. Uh, so by promoting it, you can now see that this is a high priority case inside Salesforce. So bi-directional integration there. Where it becomes even more fun is when you start to think about um, uh, text associated with these things. Uh, so if we assume that we added a new uh, comment associated with this, uh, uh, with this case, if I can actually type. There we go, not a particularly uh, um, favorable comment. Um, but when it comes to integration, it's really difficult to actually work on these things because interpreting text is a lot more difficult than saying, you know, if it's above this threshold as a numeric value. Um, so what we've done in this case is we've tried, we've tried to uh, steer it down the AI route. Um, so if I just refresh this, you should see that we've actually got uh, uh, another integration that's taken this text, been off to uh, various different uh, uh, AI engines. Uh, in this case, you can see that Einstein here has an overwhelmingly negative uh, sentiment associated with this. But just for good measure, we've been out to Watson and Google AI as well, because not all AI engines are created equally. Um, and also, as well as this, because we've actually breached a particular Time's threshold. <laughs> Up. 
Okay, thank you. Our next person on stage is Jean-Michel, who I don't think needs any introduction. <laughs> he is the master of selfies, and it makes sense that his company, Sharon Picks, are the image experts and know how to deal with any kind of image format, making it work for any device. They are Salesforce experts offering the app with the best in integration for image generation on mobile and even field service lightning app while it's offline. Also working with AI, Einstein Vision, object detection to create models easily and offer label learning services. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Three, two, one, go. So let's go. You know what? Those guys, they know you are all starving. So they asked me to do a special restaurant in three minutes. I got to do the website and the menu. And they sent me a lot of images to do that. So thanks a lot. I have this little guy, you know, inside. It's going to help me because uh, what Sharon Picks have is uh, an implementation around Einstein vision. So you just have to declare your labels, pizza, burgers, drinks, the things that you want to recognize. Then the only thing that you have to do is upload those images. So you, you have to tag them as burgers, desserts, and drinks. Doesn't help of not being starving anymore. I'm very sorry for that. <laughs> it's going to be very soon that you're going to be able to eat those kinds of pizzas. So now you've done that, it's pretty easy. You just have one click to do. And your Einstein model is created. No, you can just try your model by uploading a picture like that and have the prediction of Einstein right away there. So without the writing any line of code, you have constructed your model and have that already. So now Einstein recognizes that is 99% a drink. This is obviously 99%, 99, a pizza. And this looks like a burger. So, oh shit, I have a website to do. Only two minutes. So, oh yeah, oh, oh no, I have created this food calling <laughs> object. So I just have to upload some images I got there. Oh, they give me an EPS. I don't care. Sharing Pix is also supporting this kind of format. So I upload all the images in Sharing Pix right away there. And Einstein, my little buddy, gonna make some tagging on those images. So if I read that, I may have somewhere on each of those images some recognition. It started. It sees that it's a burger. This is live. So Einstein is a little slow today. Maybe it's gonna come. Hey! Quick, only one minute. So I got burger, burger, oh, come on. Just a little more. You have to run, 55 seconds. Can you do your job? Oh, no, yeah, we can see a lot more now. Oh, they say that this is a dessert, oh, definitely this is a logo. Let me see, oh, yes, created for me some object there. I can go there and say that this is definitely not a drink, and this is definitely not a drink as well. This must be some Logos. So, could I make it? <sighs> Very frustrating. 30 uh, seconds. Uh, okay, I will try to do it. Don't push me. Okay, I'm here. So, now, what I got? I got everything recognized, and I can tag that as a header, and I can tag that as a logo. This has been rendered right away, and if I push there, I got my website live, and I can even got a document menu made by Conga, a PDF integrating that. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, how can you top that? Okay, so next up we have Vlad, CEO of Invisible IO. So Smart Cloud Connect, their product, is an all-in-one solution that brings Salesforce right to your inbox and lets you synchronize emails, meetings, and tasks between the two. Using their contextual sidebar, you can see and edit everything you need about leads, contacts, opportunities, and other custom objects right from your inbox. As part of Invisible I.O., Cl uh, Smart Cloud Connect brings over a decade of experience in engineering products to increase user adoption and ROI of enterprise applications without leaving the native environments from where they operate. So, Vlad, are you ready? I am, thank okay, you. Okay, three, two, one, go. Thanks a lot. Um, so, I'm like you guys, I'm very heavy, uh, Salesforce user, but I start my day and I finish my day in my inbox. 
which I suppose many of you also do the same. Um, and then in this mix, I also have not only Salesforce, but the other systems. So I'm gonna be doing the demo, not even from a demo pod, it's my live envir environment, so it's not a demo gem, but like, you know, the real use case. Um, here's the thing, so when I, g when I have those email communications with uh, my counterparts, with prospects, with customers, some of them, not all of them, but some of them needs to be associated with Salesforce. Uh, more than that, uh, there are a ton of processes we have established in our Salesforce which I need to follow to some degree to be able to kind of do things right way so then my colleague, colleagues can also you know, step in when, when, when it's needed. So in this particular case, what I have on my screen, uh, that's my inbox where I've got the email coming from one of our, one of our prospects who's saying that they're ready to re-engage with us. And on the sidebar, you see that si that sidebar is contextual, so if I, if I would navigate from one email to the other, the sidebar would um, you know, scan the context of email and, and get the data out of the Salesforce. So, what it does for me, it brings to me all the relevant data from Salesforce, and by relevant, I mean really relevant to me. That's the setup issue. So you can have, uh, you can talk opportunities or cases if you are in sales. Support people can, uh, I mean, opportunities and leads if you are in sales. Support people can talk cases. There could be custom records, custom objects, uh, custom fields that, that they're all exposed here. It's for me, it's bi-directional window. I can change pretty much everything in here, uh, and it will go directly by Sales, uh, back to Salesforce. Uh, same concept is applicable to my calendar, which which is uh, uh, an interesting area because uh, I may have events which are in my calendar which uh, should be in Salesforce or which should stay my private and those Salesforce associated guys are dark blue. Uh, those guys which are my personal and never gets back, back to Salesforce, they are light blue. And again, as a user, I have a very, very easy way of uh, you know, massaging this information and everything. So uh, if I will jump back to my email with Darren, um, Few important things here is that it's not only the data which is exposed to me here, but also the, you know elements of my processes. If I need to respond to him with the email template, for example, I can easily get email template out of Salesforce, pick the uh, you know the proper template, hit the insert button, and then I've got the email pre-generated for me uh, with the content right here from Salesforce. Uh, if I have uh, other systems in place like we have, we use QuickBooks for our accounting. Uh, the data on that sidebar could be not from Salesforce, but also from other systems. For example. QuickBooks, um, and then wrapping up the whole story, we, we truly believe. Thank you. We truly believe that uh, it's not only data matter, but the processes which are which really matter. So we meld together Salesforce with email client, bring the other system, let people do their action items within the email client, and be more productive by that. Thank you. It's time. Yeah. Okay. That's it, all the apps. The, oh no, we haven't, we've got more, sorry. <laughs> That's Tony, what I just I, said. I, I, I just went too far. <laughs> no, okay, ignore me, ignore me, but I have found the trophy, which is all good. <laughs> We're here all week, folks. <laughs> Two drink minimum. Okay, next up, we have Ebsta. And we have Guy giving us a demonstration of EBSA, which provides Salesforce users with customer insights and accurate data to achieve optimal sales performance, maximize adoption, increase team efficiency. Unlike other Salesforce email integrations, EBSA equips teams with a real view of every customer interaction without the need for manual updates. It provides you with intelligent engagement scoring to improve close rates and customer retention. Also, it's able to get your Salesforce GDPR, your Salesforce instance GDPR ready by pulling data from Salesforce, business emails, external sources, and phone records to create a complete and accurate view of every customer. Good job. You ready? I am. Cool as a cucumber? I'll give it a go. Three, two, one, go. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Guy Rubin. I'm the CEO of Ebster. Um, some, of us, some of you will already know us uh, as an email integration tool for Salesforce, and we've been in the market now for uh, a few years with our front-end tools uh, in your inbox. Uh, more recently, uh, we've developed a, a, a product to solve the biggest single issue that every org we've come across has, which is that we all rely on users, our beloved users, uh, to log activity, create contacts, and keep them up to date for us over time. That causes all sorts of issues with inconsistent, out-of-date data inside Salesforce. So let me show you how we've tried to solve this for you. Uh, in this example, we're going to create uh, my, my illustrious uh, sales rep here, Craig, has met um, a new account uh, called Cressa. Uh, and so he's decided to create a new account inside Salesforce for Cressa. Now, normally that would be empty, and he'd now be responsible for logging activities, creating contacts with the people he's met. 
Uh, but now with EBSA installed inside the org, uh, you can see we've got a chronological order, uh, an audit trail, if you will, of every email anyone in the organization has ever exchanged with Cressa. Uh, we can also see in uh, uh, the second tab uh, a list of all of the contacts that anyone in the business, including myself, has ever interacted with at this account. Um, uh, and so uh, this is automatically populated and we're monitoring your email traffic looking for updates. So if anyone changes their job title or their telephone number in their email signature, we'll update the record in Salesforce. Uh, if someone leaves the business, uh, you get a hard bounce. Again, that record is, is updated. In addition to this front end inside Salesforce, we've also built this admin console. So you as the administrator can see all of these updates that we've extracted out of the email signatures. Uh, and you can either, uh, so in this example, we've got 38,000 contacts in our org or in our organization, of which uh, uh, less than half of them are actually inside Salesforce. So now as an administrator, you can push those net new contacts into Salesforce through this portal. In addition to that, of the contacts that are in Salesforce, we found over 11,000 updates in your users' inboxes. These are new telephone numbers, new job titles uh, 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 for existing contact records, social media profiles, and so on. And again, we can click through, view those updates, and as an administrator, I can push them in to update the existing records. Now, uh, through this portal, your administrators can also, uh, because we've got visibility of every human you've ever interacted with, we also give every relationship a score out of 100, and you can use this score to justify legitimate interest for GDPR. In addition, you can use our portal to respond to subject access requests. So if somebody comes into seconds. the business, uh, in this case, someone called Sam Hunt has sent in a request uh, of an audit of everything that we hold on them. We send them a list of all the personally identifiable data we hold uh, in a report along with when did we first interact, when did we last interact, who in the business has got the closest relationship, and what other systems within our organization does this person's data sit within. With a single click, we can send them a report, uh, and if they ask to be forgotten, you can click a button and soft and hard delete that data from Salesforce and from the mailboxes of your users. Ooh. This is Ebster. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, well done. Well, that's it. That's, all the demos have now been demoed. <laughs> and now it's ready for you to start to vote. So get your mobile phones out, your tablets, everything you can find to start the vote. I will get. And remember, the demoers cannot vote. That will be cheating. Hopefully. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Everybody's phone's out. You all ready to go? So the link is, are you ready for this? Bit.ly, so bit.ly slash LDN 18 Demo Jam, all lowercase. So it's time to vote for your favorite. You get a little form there, choose the one you like. And Jody is collating the scores. She's counting up each one individually. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Even if you're online as well. Are you streaming online? Vote as well for your favorite one. How's it coming, Jody? It's going. Dun, dun, dun. Nervous times. OK, can all the demo jammers come up to the stage? There's a lot of nervous faces. <laughs> How are you feeling? Hungry after John Michel's. Oh, yeah, food. the food. <laughs> Actually, That's why I made the feedback. Okay. Here we go. Right. Oh, just fine. Squeeze in. Yeah. Jody, how's it going? Is it people still waiting to vote, or is they. How's it going? Still people wanting to vote? Or has everybody voted? Right. Are we ready? I'll get the trophy. Oh, yeah. I'm just showing it. Here it is. We found it. 
Yeah, I think everybody's voted. Nobody else waiting, no? No, okay, cool. Well, here we go. The winner is four. You don't get to say it. <laughs> go, go, go. So, I am happy to present Air Call. Oh, wow. Cool. There you go. Thank you, guys. A 2018 Demo Jam winner. Do you want to say anything? Well, first, thanks, everybody, for voting for us. I mean, we're, we're really, really working so hard on this solution to make it as simple for you at any point if you want to start your new phone system with us. It will honestly take you three minutes, so we'll be here waiting for you. And thanks again for everybody. Cool. Okay. So next up is lunch. Uh, uh, it's sponsored by Scribe, which is a data integration platform that can help you connect Salesforce with your other business applications in record time. Now there's two tables. The ne one nearest us is pies, uh, vegetable and be meat pies. And the furthest table is casseroles and dietary. If you've got dietary need, go to that table as well. And make two lines down the stairs. So if you're on the left hand side, go around the back. And if you're on the right hand side, it'll be the pies table. <laughs> 